All right, Ryan, what do they say in that movie? Like, it's no place like home. What did that come from? The Wizard of Oz? But there's no place like the studio. I know that's what Ryan said. We're finally back on Listen Up, Ryan. It's been almost a week. And we've had some birthdays that passed by in that week. Um, we have some time off. So just want to shout out to everybody again. Wish them a happy birthday. Any birthdays that are in July. You know, it's it's fun to actually step aside and, and do some, you know, other stuff other than basketball talk all the time. We should start having people like comment, you know, like when their birthdays are. Hey, maybe maybe sooner or later you'll get a surprise in the mail, huh? With the <laughs> from Ryan and I on listen up. Uh <laughs> with a picture and how about a uh, nice Yukon hat for him, you know, um, start getting involved more with our subscribers because we can't appreciate them enough, Ryan, and all of our followers. Uh, the last video really jumped again and we do appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Start putting in the comments, birthdays, anybody you want us to shout out to maybe uh, start looking up when some, some Yukon Husky players are, or uh any many women that play in the WNBA so we'll have to do some more research and find out any special birthdays but yeah uh, let us know in the comments about any birthdays and we'll, we'll try to give you a shout out you know uh Gino's birthday that's a must that that's a must. you can't let that birthday go by without <laughs> no. sending him a gift no, uh, that, so that's... yeah Ryan today is Nika Mule Day on listen up and we will continue with this series Ryan we're almost through the series um something that Iva had uh, told us to, uh, she basically said, hey, she laid it on the table and she said, do it, just do it, <laughs> you know, to pass some time away. Uh, that's exactly what we're doing. We're coming up at the end of July, so it's fitting in perfectly. Um, Ryan, November is, it will be here before you know it. So why don't you go ahead and get uh, on down into this discussion of a guard, a junior, Nika Mule. Yeah, I, I've really loved this series. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad they gave us that idea, and uh, I've, I've really enjoyed talking about all these coaches, the assistant coaches, yeah. all these players. But yeah, it's gone by quick. It just seemed like the other day it was July 4th, and now it's the end of July already. But yeah. today, Nika Mule Jr. Uh, Nika Mule. I just want to say she's probably one of my favorite players on this team. Okay. And I think the the main reason for that is just the energy that that she brings to the team every single day at, at, at practice in the games on the bench uh you know all, all the players bring a lot of the energy but I, I just feel like nika mule's energy that she brings to this team is just really unmatched in my opinion uh in, in terms of, especially on the defensive side of things the flashy plays on offense that page beckers and az fudd all these talented players on this uconn team uh, all those flashy flares that they do on offense are great, but I really like the, the defensive plays that Nika Mule made last season. In my opinion, uh, she was the best defensive player on this team last season. And just the, the intensity, all the steals, she creates turnovers. And on offense, she really knows the offense well. She doesn't score a lot, but I think she really makes a lot of good passing plays. Um, and, and when Paige went out, I, I think you really saw or, or we all really saw that she really knows the offense well. She contributes a lot to it. Like I said, she doesn't really score, but she knows how to pass in this offense and she plays great defense. And I think that's exactly why Gino really likes Nika Mule a lot, because she just fits in the, into the system ju just perfectly. And her intensity, like I said, it is just unmatched. I love when Nika is hyping up her teammates that are playing when she's on the bench or on the court, I just think she gets everybody hyped up for the game and just keeps them, keep that intensity at, at, at a maximum capacity during the whole entire game. When you look as a freshman, I, I love to see how many games that they appeared in and uh, how many starts um, because she was, uh, you know, I, th this is one of the players I believe on this podcast that we, um, get comments about where we do not speak of her enough you know and that's why we figure we have a a video on every single player every single coach you know uh to to talk about them and give them their own spotlight uh with that said yes um i have to admit i, I didn't really speak of her enough like i should have uh this past season and and this off season uh with that said ryan it, what stood out to me the 15 starts as a freshman 15 starts okay and she appeared in 23 games so 
you know, when you have a freshman coming in like this, Ryan, um, again, with this, with the program so competitive, how does that speak volumes, you know, to how special of a player that she is, Nika Mule, 15 starts in her freshman year. Sometimes you don't even get five starts during your freshman year at whatever school that you're going to. Yeah, that, that's very true. And that just shows the, the what type of player that she is and how much yeah. Gino and that, that coaching staff really trusted her to put her in that many starts as, as a freshman right off the gate uh, to start 15 games as a freshman for the UConn Huskies. You don't really see that a lot uh, unless you're like Paige Beckers or a Sue Bird or a, a Diana Taurasi. But uh, yeah, 15 games, that's pretty impressive. And uh, definitely, she definitely started in a lot of games last year, even though uh, she was in and out of the, the lineup, the starting lineup quite a bit. But I think Nika is also one of those players that, uh, like Lou Lopez, can get switched in and out, uh, not not different positions, but just in and out of the starting lineup, uh, because I just think she's one of those type of players that you're going to put her in that lineup, whether she's starting or coming off the bench, and she's going to find a way to make an impact somehow and, and help the team win. Uh, so that's why I keep bringing up this starting lineup every single episode, because it really, I, I love talking about it. I love discussing it because there's so many different things that Gino can do this season with mm -hmm. all these players. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think Nika can be in the starting lineup for day one of that first regular season game. Uh, and I think she'll be, you know, off the bench some games and in that starting lineup. So it's going to be interesting to see, but Nika can make an impact no matter uh, how many minutes she plays or whether she's in that starting lineup or not. You know, and Nika Mule, speaking of Nika Mule, again, putting a spotlight on her on this uh, specific day and this episode, she's like the, I, I'm, other than Paige Beckers, obviously, because I have a picture of Paige here, Ryan, we didn't even mention that yet. Uh, we finally got our faces taken down. That's enough showing our faces yeah. for a while. Uh, getting a, a Yukon Husky up on that wall. Um, but, I mean, we had Paige back here Um as she is getting hyped up in a game, one of my favorite photos of her um, iconic photo from UConn. Um, with that said, though, Ryan, uh, actually, you know, it's a good idea. I might take that actually down to University of Maryland and uh, just hang it right over that side wall, right? And just say, here, here, Paige, sign this. How yeah. about that? So, yeah. uh, but uh, I think that's a good idea. I, I wanted to see what you had to say about that. Hopefully security will let us in with that big uh, picture. Uh, hopefully you can do a little bit of talking, uh, talking up to him and hook me up there. Uh, but with that said, though, I tell you, Nika Mule reminds me of like the Draymond Green of the NBA, the Ray Lewis of the Baltimore Ravens, uh, the Brian Erlacher of the Chicago Bears. You know, she's again, I get it. Players get hyped. They get hyped when they make plays. Um, you know, just like we have here, Paige Beckers on the wall getting hyped up. But, again, I just feel like Nika Mule might even have that extra step over Paige Beckers when it comes to bringing full-on energy uh, to the court. Not saying Paige Beckers doesn't bring the energy, but just, just the way Nika Mule gets pumped up. You know, I'm saying that maybe we don't see Paige Beckers pumped up like that, um, like Nika Mule, like Nika Mule, right, enough times. And, hey, sometimes a player is – is at their best when they never get pumped up, you know, like you, I've always said as laid back as you are, <laughs> yeah. Ryan could be having a 40 or 50 point game, you know, a legendary basketball game on his hands, but Ryan will still be going over to that side bench when he gets taken out of the game and he'll have a serious face and he'll high five everybody <laughs> and he'll sit down. So, <laughs> you know, so, but I feel like Nika Mule is just, man, I mean, she just, you know, there could be, they could be losing by 20, but man, she's going to bring it. She's, you know, she's clapping her hands in the visiting players' faces. Uh, she's bringing the heat, and and that's what it's all about, man. We spoke to Michaela Daniels, KK Arnold. We spoke to so many already on this podcast, and before we even started this podcast. And Ryan, you know, at, at the end of the day, you saw she reminds me of, of like a KK Arnold. You saw them them um, episodes or them highlights of KK uh, when you're having fun. And plus, when you're a great legendary player, man, oh, man, there's not much more a head coach looks forward to in their eyes. Yeah, I completely agree. Couldn't agree more. And it, it really does show when, when your energy is on the court. It, it, you can really see it 
if you're watching the game live in the stadium or on TV, you, you can tell who's bringing the energy and the intensity level the entire time. And Nika always encouraging her teammates on and off the court, uh, always giving you know, clapping your hand, clapping her hands, just like you said, encouraging them where they make or miss a shot. She's always there backing them up, uh, giving them a talk or, you know, encouraging them to, to make the next shot or continue to keep on playing defense or whatnot. So I just think she, she brings so much to this team. Uh, like I said, she doesn't score a lot, but that she brings so much to the team that we don't even see. Uh, but we definitely see her energy and intensity and that especially on the defensive side of things on the court. So I, I think she's just going to be uh, one of the, the main, uh, you know, players that, that is able to step up on defense for UConn and kind of lead that charge when it comes to a momentum swing in the game. If UConn is down, uh, I think she's really a type of player that's going to pick the team up and get them going, especially on the defensive side of things. And I really think kept saying this a lot last year, UConn's defense a lot of the time leads to their offense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and again, she appeared in 33 games with 19 starts as a sophomore freshman, 23 games with 15 starts. I only expect that number as long as she stays, um, stays healthy. I only expect that number to jump up even more. Uh, maybe can you see 20 plus starts? What's the number you're giving her? Um, all maybe all the games on the schedule. She appears in every single game on the schedule again, cause she's not a senior yet, but she's getting close junior year. I think Ryan, I would make the, uh, strong, strong, a prediction that she appears in every game this season. Um, maybe starts every game. I'm not too sure about starting every game, but hey, it wouldn't surprise me if if she would be five, six, seven games short of of all starts. Um, and I'm telling you, as far as March Madness goes, I think that it's a uh, it's a given. You know, I, I think you may see her in that starting five um, in March Madness, no matter who they're playing. Yeah, I don't know about starting every single game because, like I said, there's so many players that Gina can plug in and out. But I think as long as she stays healthy this entire season, she'll definitely be in that lineup at some point in the game, mm -hmm. getting pretty good minutes yeah. uh, all season long. And like you said, <laughs> for March Madness, I know in that game last year against UCF, I think it was when UConn had that home court advantage. I know Nika was loving that. I, I could really tell that she was hyped up for that game. She fed off the crowd for that one. I think everybody did for that game. But, yeah, it, it's going to be interesting to see how many uh, minutes that she gets. But I, I expect her to get definitely a lot of minutes, whether she's starting or not. So we'll just have to see. But, uh, yeah, I think Nika Mule is going to make a huge impact for this team this season. And Nika Mule's favorite player, I guess who it is, Dennis Rodman. So, hey, what a legendary makes sense. player. That, that definitely makes sense. What a legendary player. Dennis Rodman, shout out to him. Um, all right. With that said, Ryan, going on to your favorite part of the show, UConn Huskies transfer Lou Lopez Senecal. Uh, comment time here on Listen Up. We'll start with Tom Kibbe. Thanks again for coming through, Tom. Lou is French and her parents live in France. One thing no one other than Gino has remarked on how tough she is. And that is not something that all the recent and current Huskies have exhibited. Yeah, and I think that's huge because obviously we know that Luke can score. She did it uh, in her last school where she was there for four years. Uh, but, you know, coming to UConn, she can definitely score. But I think in terms of defense, I don't really know what to expect out of her for defense. But uh, her toughness, you can definitely see it if you watch her highlights. She's definitely a really tough player. I completely agree with that. So I think that's definitely going to help her out a lot in terms of defense. Uh, and fit it into this UConn system because I agree. I, I think uh, in terms of the recruiting classes these past couple seasons, uh, in terms of strength, I think that's kind of been a weakness for the Huskies. So uh, maybe maybe Lou can uh, br bring a little strength to this team and uh, hype up the UConn Huskies some along with Nika Mule. Gary, being real, Lou is from another country. They just don't play hard ball. This girl is no joke. Or, excuse me, being real, Lou is from another country. They just play hardball. This girl is no joke. She will help out great UC. Yeah, well, we, 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 will, we will see. We'll, we'll definitely see at, at the start of the season. 
Uh, I think Nika and, and Lou will, will be switched in and out of the starting lineup quite a bit. Or uh, maybe maybe they both come off the bench as a pair uh, with Lou, Lou bringing the offense off the bench and Nika bringing that defensive intensity. I think that's a really good uh, duo that Gino can use off of the bench that come in uh, for AZ Caroline or Paige and Caroline or whatnot. But uh, I'm just really excited to see how many minutes Lou and Nika get uh, because Lou can definitely score and, and Nika brings that defensive intensity. So I think it, it's definitely a good duo. But yeah, Lou, uh, Lou being from a different country, uh, they, they play a little different over there. So that, that toughness is definitely going to be needed this season. Yeah, thanks, Gary, again for coming through. Uh, do you ever show clips of the players you speak of? That was one St. Germain. Well, I tell you, once you get that official call from Gino, Ryan, I think that'll be more safe. Uh, more on the safe side. But for now, I, I'm not too sure about these copyright situations. <laughs> Ryan has had bad luck since we started this show. <laughs> yeah, well, we tried to, we used to try to put music in the uh, introductions or at the end of the video. Yeah. Then we kept getting all these, all these copyright strikes. Yeah. And uh, I, th I think we got so many that it said, like, if we get one more, we get banned or banned Band, for a month. Well, you or, know, yeah, UConn, yeah, I, so I'm sure the city of UConn <laughs> wouldn't like us banned. No, but yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that there's definitely a way. And uh, I think like we said in that last episode, we're, we're going to try to work on an intro video mm. and uh, hopefully have that at, at the beginning of the season. So that, that'll be pretty exciting. This is interesting. These two, John Apolito, thanks for coming through. Lou Lopez is the biggest pickup for the Huskies, <laughs> and she will be like Vinny Johnson, a.k.a. the microwave. Instant offense, that's what Lou Lopez will bring to this team. She's an absolute scorer, so any lead that she comes in off the bench, she will add to it as players get their rotation down. She brings leadership, scoring, and experience. Yeah, completely agree. Couldn't agree more. And, and that's the thing. I think if UConn is struggling on offense at the beginning of the game, we saw that a couple games uh, last season during the season. They, they didn't quite have it at the beginning of the game, and they kind of had to make up for it in the second half and finish it off in the fourth quarter. But I think if UConn is struggling this season right off the gate, Gino can definitely put Lou in and get that instant offense that he's looking for and kind of get the momentum swinging back into their direction. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that that would be great for the team this season to have that instant offensive impact off the bench from Lou. Andrew Jones goes, how's the team looking so far this upcoming season? Well, that's that's what we're trying to break down, Ryan, during this whole summer. Uh, that's a big topic there that can be broken into little pieces. But, Ryan, like you said, we'll have to eventually have – I mean, stay forward, guys. Uh, stay tuned. This is going to be a long, long three months, what we have, August, September, and October. I mean, Ryan, we have the schedule breakdown. We're going to break down every single game. And then at the end of all of it, Ryan will give his big, bold prediction if uh, if these Huskies will go all the way or not. Yeah, and the starting lineup prediction as well. We we can't forget mm -hmm. about that, and that that'll be a big one. Man, they uh, love to talk starting five in UConn. I've never seen a program that loves to talk <laughs> starting five so much. Yeah, I mean, because I just think you with, with a lot of other schools, I think there's kind of a, a starting five already in mind that you mm -hmm. have at the uh, beginning of the season, a month ahead. Yeah. Uh, but with, with UConn and a couple other the bigger schools, you, there's so many there's so many players that that are so good. You just really don't know who uh, can fill out those positions. But and I, I think I, if you're Gino, that that's a good problem to have. Yeah, it's it's yeah, definitely yeah. a good problem. But yeah, I, yeah, I, I think the team looks great this season. I, I've said it since that uh, championship loss last season, going into the off season at the very beginning. Uh, I, be I really do believe in this team this year. I, I knew they were going to be good. Uh, I think they look pretty good throughout the summer workouts. I think Gino is pretty happy with the team so far. Uh, so all the girls on this team, I, I think, have a, have a chance to uh, have a pretty good impact on the team. But uh, I think the team looks great. I, I really do believe they have a chance to go all the way again. Uh, and win it this season, but we, we got a long way to go as, even before the season starts, but I, I think the team looks great. And how about time for one more, Ryan, on Listen Up? How about th – this is – well, i tell you what, two more, because we have to read Iva's comments, especially during this series. It was her idea, so we're not going to leave Iva out. Iva says, totally agree on Lou being kind of player like Avina for this season. 
We will see how she will adjust to the Huskies when the games start. Yeah, with, with a couple of these players that we've been talking about, we're not really sure how they're going to adjust, especially with the two new uh, transfers or, or two new recruits coming in. Uh, and with Lou being a transfer, obviously she's a great offensive player, but still needs to fit into the system and get the passing down uh, and, and all the plays that they run. They, they really do have a, a very unique system at UConn that, that Gino likes to run. So, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I have really, really good confidence in Lou that, that the players and Gino will get her ready, uh, all ready for the system, know all the plays, the passing plays. So uh, I think she'll fit it. I think Lou will fit in great this season. Sure thing. And uh, the last one we will go over is uh, Chester Misek. Misek. Correct me if I'm saying this last name wrong. Chester, we'll just say his first name. Chester, thanks for coming through. New name. I haven't seen this one yet, so thank you for following us. My take, oh boy, my take is that Lou should start and AZ Fudd should learn. That, that that's yeah. a big one that that's gonna oh. fire up some people i i hope they uh i hope they're watching to the end of this video because oh, that, that'll boy. fire some people up in the oh, comments boy. so uh you know comment down below oh, what, what, uh, on that on that take but oh. um i i don't know about az i i think i mean he he didn't just say ryan i had to cut you off he didn't just say he thinks az should sit yeah or get benched he said he thinks az should learn yeah well i think for for az and caroline there, there's definitely still room to learn there, there's a ton of room to learn like i said before az and caroline had such great seasons last year and they were only freshmen so they're they're stealing it just keep going up and up and there's still obviously a, a lot of room to learn uh but i, I definitely think az and caroline deserve the starting spot at the beginning of the season along with Paige. Uh, but you can make a case also for a very good case for Lou and Nika to have a, a spot in that starting lineup as well. So that's what I'm saying. There's so many players you can plug in and out of the starting lineup and, and make really good cases for that player. So it's going to be really interesting. But I, I definitely do agree. AZ has a lot of room to learn, but uh, her shot is so unique and one of a kind. She's this very special offensive player and the same with Caroline as well. Getting closer to that number one player on that list, Ryan. And with that, we will leave it right there. I'll probably see you one or two more times maybe this week. Uh, although, hey, I want to shout out to you and shout out to anyone um, just by chance who may be at that July 31st game, Ryan, the Storm and the Mystics. Ryan, that speaks volumes. Um, we're both blessed to be able to attend that one uh, in D.C. as that's potentially Sue Bird's last game ever in the nation's capital yeah definitely last regular season game unless yeah. they mean the playoffs it will be her last time in, in washington so very very excited to go down to that game see uh sue bird one last time in person such a great player obviously came from gino and, and yukon but uh you know would definitely be a hall of famer in the WNBA. uh she's done so much for the sport sue bird just an incredible incredible player incredible woman uh, done so much for the WNBA. All right, Ryan, let's wrap it right there. Let's go get some lunch, Ryan. It's Phil and Rye on Listen Up.